what if you could just type what you wanted to carve? Or upload a picture and, you know, just carve it? Well, now you can. Carveco AI instantly turns your ideas or images into incredible carve-ready 3D models. And yes, you can export these as STL files for 3D printing with any level of Carveco software without any restrictions. So let me give you the beginner walkthrough and then I'll show you some really wild ways that I've been using it as well. Let's dive right in. No matter what version of Carveco you have, you can go ahead and jump in and your familiar interface is gonna pop up and you're gonna have generate with AI. Go ahead and click that. You'll see text to relief, image to relief, and then down here you'll see how many credits you have left as well as the ability to purchase more. First, let's go ahead and jump into text to relief. Once this pulls up, you can see that you can easily jump over to generate with image, but it'll give you this area we can start typing stuff in, generate that image, and then it'll pop up here. But what I really wanna focus on right here is just these few images down here. These will cycle through, there will be different ones all the time, and you can just click on them and see, oh, this is a scallop that they made, and this is how they made it. So instead of changing this, I'm gonna hit generate image, and that's gonna pull up four different images for us that we can choose if we actually like them to turn them into reliefs. Now, I don't know, I like this one. It's very isolated, it's not too close to, this, to the walls. Uh, for me, I found that that's like a really good place to be. So instead of exploring this a little bit more right now, let's go ahead and just generate our first relief. Like I said, this is going to generate your relief, but it's also gonna take up five credits, whereas that four images right there took up one credit, and that's how quickly it just generated the relief. I couldn't even explain what else was happening. It did it that fast. Now, it's gonna go ahead and make a few assumptions on your image, where the background is. You can see right there, it's going to assume that this is what you want uh, generated, and then based on lighting and texture and stuff like that, it's also going to give it mass or body. Now, you're gonna see these three different tools, depth, detail and zero plane. And what you're immediately going to want to do is try and figure out how this is going to fit into your material. So your Z depth and go ahead and just don't think about that right now. What we're really thinking about is how to give it detail that you're looking for. So if you slide up depth, what that's going to do is it's going to really stretch out the image. And then if you slide that back down, it's going to flatten it. So right here, I think it generated it as about right there, which is kind of what we're looking for. We definitely want it to be domed shaped, but also once we zoom in, we're going to go ahead and crank up the detail. This is something that is huge when it concerns like having, I don't know, fur or hair or ripples in water or light coming down, which we'll be getting into later. Uh, this is going to be huge. And all of the free or even paid relief or STL generators that I've used, there are not this many tools that you can use to further refine the image or the relief that it's giving you. Most of the time it spits something out that's very washed out. So something even similar to this or even much more triangulated. And it says, here's your relief. Good luck with it. See you later. But Carveco is giving you so many tools and honestly more than I would have expected. If you use Carveco Maker, you know that you can import a ton of different STLs just into Maker and be able to create scenes. Uh, and it gives you enough 3D capabilities where you're not really, really trying to go off and get more. But when you step up to Carveco Maker Plus, that's when like it just opens up an entire library of tools to be able to use to generate things. And you have the ability to be able to further refine this right here in any version of the software. For us, let's just go ahead and leave it right here. I like all these cracks that it's showing us. And then the last one that you can do is zero plane. What that's gonna do is it's gonna take away the background and it's gonna be able to isolate your relief that you've just generated. Right here, you can see that it has a tendency to what I've been calling potato chip, uh, the very bottom of your image, but that's very easy in any version of Carve Code just to delete that out. But right here, you're left with your perfect relief. Now what you can do with that is go into save to clip art library right here. You can see I've already saved two. And when you save this, it's going to save it to a relief library inside of carve code that's named AI generated. So let's go ahead and say that this is shell two. I'm going to go ahead and click save. Now let's find it in maker. You go to relief and go to clip art library. AI generated is going to be the library that pulls up. This was a shell that I did before as well as a dog. We'll get into those, but let's go ahead and bring in the shell we just made bring that in here and I'm just gonna take the rest of this relief and do this very lazily and just paste it off of here so that it automatically deletes all that kind of stuff. Uh, if you want a whole video of going into how to isolate images further, let me know down in the comments down below. I'd be more than happy to, but right now it's just exploring Carveco AI. So we have this and even in the very basic version of Carveco, you can go ahead and create a triangle mesh which is going to create an STL for us and boom. That is an STL that you can go and take and 3D print. 
So we just saved it to our leaf library where I showed you where you can find it and be able to use it. Let's go ahead and click back. It's going to say, hey, make sure you've saved everything. Let's go ahead and generate another image. So let's say that I really like this, but I don't want to do a seashell or a scallop or whatever. I want to do a sleeping cat. Last time I did a sleeping dog, let's try sleeping cat. I'm going to use up one credit. I'm going to generate four different images. Hopefully one of these is somewhat uh, to my liking. If not, we just keep on generating images. But we've got one, two, three, four. Uh, let's go ahead and get this guy right here. It's kind of isolated in the center of the image. You can see slight shadows right here. So we're definitely going to be able to have a little bit of potato chipping at the bottom. But instead of looking at it, let's just go ahead and generate it. And like I've been saying, this whole process of generation is very, very fast. So you're immediately going to be able to have your image. You can see right there, we've got our little sleeping cat. And then we can use our tools and be able to further create a cat that we know is going to make for a really, really good model. Like I said, we're really not trying to imagine this in a piece of wood right now. We're trying to imagine the detail that we're giving this. So being able to stretch the image or flatten it out, as well as being able to uh, be able to provide more texture to it and be able to bring out some of the subtleties in the image. Now, like I said, you can go ahead and zero this out. It's starting to affect the model right here a little bit, so I'm going to back off a little bit. But right here, you can go ahead, save it to your clip art, and say, sleeping cat and there it's saved into carveco for you to be able to use wherever you want to whenever you want to sell it on etsy if you want to i've got a ton of really cool models on my etsy right now that i've been generating with carveco ai i'll have it linked down below if you want to be able to go ahead and check that out to see what i think is actually worth sellable out there a huge word of caution to anybody out there who's never used any type of ai if you just go in here and type in cat it is probably not going to give you what you're looking for you're really going to have to define what you're looking for. And I think that if you start using Carveco AI and you say, oh, that's a cute cat, and then you generate this relief, you're probably not going to get the results that you really, really want. You can get really great results, like, hey, that's a really great cat. You can go ahead and take away the background, go ahead and isolate a little bit, and immediately carve that because Carveco AI is really, really good at turning images into reliefs. But if you're coming here and you're fully expecting it to create the image that you have in your mind without really defining what that image is, so a cat jumping off a moving car in at the beach. So if you're defining it a little bit more, it's really going to help it understand what you're looking for instead of just saying cat. So boom, we've got this, we've got a moving car, it's at the beach, we're generating our relief. And then very quickly, it's going to give us exactly what we we're looking for. And heck, if you wanted to be able to save that uh, and carve it out, you certainly could. <laughs> there, you've, you've got your relief. Now let's go ahead and jump into image to relief, which I have a ton to say about. Now this dialogue is very similar, but it's just pretty much giving you this area where you can go ahead and bring in your images. I have a slew of images right here, some that I think work really well, some that I think that there's some small caveats that you should know about. So let's go ahead and jump right in. The first thing I think that people are going to do is take a family picture, like here is <laughs> the Carveco family with James and I, and generate this relief. Now, it is going to take a second longer than the ones that I'm about to show you all, because this one has a lot of depth to it. We've got the ceiling, it's coming at us. We've got this floor, it's coming at us. We've got this group, and then back here, we've got a lot of dimension to this background, which is why I'm wanting to show it to you because it's going to generate an image that really shows off that depth quite well. Like I said, we've got our ceiling, we've got our floor, and we've got our group right here. And the group is looking quite flat because there's so much other depth in this image that it's trying to create. It's done a really great job of capturing the 3D-ness of all of what's happening in here. But when you go into the group, like I said, they are looking a little bit flat. In order to combat that, what you might need to do is go in and crop out or even remove some of the background features of your image and be able to use that to be able to pull out the details that you're actually looking for. Like I said, this went a whole lot faster than the other one because it wasn't trying to compute as much depth and we've gotten a really good image. This is where when you really drag up your detail, you can start seeing a lot more of the friendly features of our faces. And then if we were to bring up the depth, we also can just bring out our characters a little bit more and how we're able to view them. If you're trying to isolate these, you can go ahead and erase the background. If you go a little bit too far, it's gonna start getting into your characters right there, but you can go ahead and isolate out as much as you want to. And there we've got a really, really great relief that you can directly save into 
CarveCo without having to save it to your computer and then bring it into CarveCo. Incredible stuff. Now, what I really think this entire thing shines at is bringing in super intricate images and turning them into reliefs. So here's an image that I generated in Gemini. What I've done is I've told it all of these crazy prompts. This is paragraphs worth of prompts in order to get this marble uh, lighthouse inside of a live edge that is pill shaped. And right here we've got this little bit of shadow which is pretty much saying it's resting on its table. That shadow is something that I really wanna pay attention to because that shadow is what just created this huge potato chip right there, which for some people is no big deal and other people it's gonna take a little bit to isolate. But beyond that potato chip, holy moly, look at that. <laughs> like, like, okay, we've got all of our details in our live edge wood. And then we've got this incredible like inset dome right here where the lighthouse is standing proud. We've got our light rays, we've got our stormy clouds and look at those huge waves. And then look at this. If we pump up our details, it brings in even more. It shows us some of the rain that's coming in the background. And depending on what you're carving this with on your CNC machine, you can get all of those details into your final image. Like how nuts is that? Look at all this. Now, if you were to take that exact same image, and instead of having it as its direct thing that the AI generated, I went and took the background out and then I put it on a vertical gradient. That vertical gradient in my mind, and this might not even be the case, but in my mind it breaks up that potato chipping a little bit at the bottom and kind of like separates it a little bit. So we get a little bit less of it. And as you can see, it's generated the image a little bit differently than it did in the first one because of what it was shown, even though the main subject is the same. And if we go ahead and crank down that depth a little bit back to where it was for the other one, we can also pump up these details and bring it back to what we just had. And the reason that I pill shaped this is so that I can easily create a vector that is pill shaped and then zero out the rest of the model behind it. Actually, let me go ahead and show you what I actually mean by that. This is just a normal 12 by 12 model. We're gonna go in, we're gonna snag our lighthouse. Let's just go ahead and bring this up right here. And then we're gonna paste this in the middle. Now, obviously we don't want all of this other stuff around it. So in order to combat that, we're going to view it from the top. I'm gonna go in here and very roughly, just for video purposes, go ahead and create a pill shape. That around. All right, so we've got our pill shape a vector right there and then you can come in here and then zero outside the vector and boom, in less than a minute, we have created our relief then we have isolated our relief. And then if you wanted to sell this on Etsy or something, you come in here and create a triangle mesh of it, save it, export it, and you're done. How nuts is that? Let's try another one that I think is absolutely insane. This is once again an image that I've generated with another AI, something that I can just throw in a ton of words in order to get exactly what I was looking for. As you can see, we've got a bear right there and we've got a trout and the generation that we're about to see is absolutely nuts. Look at that. Just the amount of detail in it and the perspective, like if you're facing this from the wall, this is closer to you than this right here. Like it understood the perspective and the depth that the image really needed. And like I said, if you ever wanna bring up more detail or bring in less, like even with washed out detail, this looks perfect. Like. I just can't begin to explain the world that this is gonna open up for just normal people to be able to go in and create just a cat to be able to carve or to be able to uh, take a picture of their grandkids and be able to carve those without ever having to contact somebody on Fiverr or go to online forums and hopefully find somebody and pay them a hundred bucks and then wait four weeks for it to come back and them not be super happy with it, but realizing that they wasted their hundred bucks and they're just gonna try and carve it anyways. This just, obliterates all of that. You can now just sit there and do as much or as little as you want to to be able to get the type of details that you're looking for in your images. Like I know that people use the word like game changer a lot and personally I don't like using that a ton but as far as relief generation is concerned for CNC users this is such a massive leap forward in our world. I have not even remotely been this excited about any tools that have come into my shop lately 
as much as I have been about this. And this is a digital tool. Like, like look at this. Like, that fish is coming out. It's eating that crankbait. And yes, the AI-generated image that I use for this does have this random piece of fishing line. But what I really want to focus on are all these light rays coming through the water. And you can bring those out and show them as much as you want to or completely wash them away if that's not something that you want to show in your image. Like, the amount of possibilities with this is insane. And like I said, isolate this, put it on Etsy, start selling it as just kind of like a passive thing to see if anybody out there wants this or not. Got these up on Etsy if anybody wants to check these out. If you're a CNC with me member, all these will be completely for free. But I've created a bunch of these different images, some with sharks, some with sirens, which I cannot show here um, <laughs> because it is YouTube, but also I do have some with krakens as well. And it gives this really cool 3D pop image. Now, some of y'all might be saying, Hamilton, that's going to be absolutely miserable to carve. Look at that huge amount of drop off. And once again, as you're working in here, you're working on the details rather than the thickness. So when I look at this, this is a really good image to be able to throw into carve code. Then it's going to be able to uh, kind of make it so that it is very good for the thickness of your material. This is making it so that it's very good for carving and very good for detail. But once you actually bring it into your material, then you can start messing around with the Z height or the thickness of your actual model. So right here, you can crank up the details. You can see the crazy stuff as far as like the waves, all those other sharks, even the skull and treasure chest right here. And then, like I said, if you really want to make it pop, you can bring this stuff up. But I think that that's getting a little bit too crazy or you can bring it down as low as you want it to. But I really like it right there because like the nose of this really pops out as you can see right here i did 3d print this out and it 3d printed even at such a small scale in such a great way where you can just maintain all of those details in it now this one right here is one that i've actually generated and i've carved on the cnc and i have 3d printed it as you can see right here on the cnc it did an incredible job of carving this is out of walnut and i mean everything looks perfect i even showed this to my dad and he was like what <laughs> i was like i know we just generated this and immediately carved it out and right here you can see the 3d printing which i should not have done out of a marble filament but <laughs> for good or bad the actual printing turned out incredible and you can see that this model is right here it didn't take any time at all in order to create you can bring in more details so you can see more of the scales right here you can push them down so that it's all smoothed out if you want to the amount of things that you can do with this absolutely insane and how quickly you can do it i'm not having to talk to anybody else out in the world i'm able just to do all of this in my software in a very user friendly way where i'm not having to know a ton about 3d modeling in order to get really really great results like completely isolated ready to roll ready to carve what more could you want but seriously what more could you actually want to me, Carveco has always been the best option for CNC software, and they continue to offer more innovative features than anyone else in the space. The version that I'm showing off today is the beta version, so please note there might be some changes made before you actually get your hands on it. If you're interested in Carveco AI, you can get started with the Carveco Maker and try it out for a month or so and see if it's actually something that you're going to be using long term. I'll have a link down in the description if you're interested in trying it out. And if you're curious about Carveco Academy, head to carvecoacademy.com. If you're a member and you're interested in the files that I have for sale on Etsy, don't buy them. Uh, they're completely for free for you. Uh, they're in STL format, so hopefully they'll be useful uh, in other software outside of Carveco if you are going to be using them there. If you have any more questions that I didn't go over in this video about Carveco AI, please leave them down in the description below. I'll do my best to answer any that I can because there was a ton to go over and I really just chose to stick on two different things. It's, there's a whole lot to go into about relief isolation and prompts to be able to generate like the best uh, image that you can and you can find a ton of those on YouTube about just generating really cool images with AI and then bring them over to Carveco and turn those into really awesome reliefs. All right, bye.